This is Twit. I've had an epiphany, Paris. I already Ooh. told I already told Jason I had an epiphany about AI. You know, have we talked about uh, the problems with AI hallucinations? The fact that it takes so much energy mm. to do it. You know, you're burning the planet while asking stupid questions and getting you know Cliff Clavin answers. There's definitely problems, and I think we've oversold a little bit what AI can do, except in one area. And I I I, I had this epiphany. With expert systems, if you tell the AI, here's the body of information I want you to know and regurgitate, it's phenomenally useful. And the reason I know this yeah. is I've actually made two GPTs. Um, this was OpenAI's uh, thing. They're going to have a store where you can make your own expert system. I have an email. I mean, look. These are things for me. That's what's cool about it. It's yeah, personal. Right. An Emacs assistant and a Lisp assistant. So you can ask it, you know, uh, how does if work, question mark. And it will actually regurgitate because I gave it the body of information. Very useful for me, from my point of view, information. The reason being, I took my seven foot shelf of Lisp books and put it all into this thing. And I said to it, I said very specifically, in fact, let me go to the, the configuration. I said very specifically, don't regurgitate anything that isn't in this body of knowledge that I gave you. Don't make anything up. If it's not in these books, I also added some online resources. You can easily, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll show you, you can add a URL. Actually, I don't because I don't want to screw it up. But you can say add a URL. Oh, no kidding. So you can point yeah. to a place, a destination yeah. online and say, use this as your corpus of, of exactly. information as well. So as that long as this thing's digital, whether it's yeah. a PDF, a doc, it doesn't read EPUBs, I found out. Uh, but you can convert PDFs mm -hmm. to docs. Let me go to, um, I have, there are lots of Lisp websites out there. Let me see. Here's writing small CLI programs in common Lisp. So now there's a copyright issue. One of the reasons I'm not making this public is I'm stealing st <laughs> I'm stealing <What>? stuff. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if this guy, Steve Loesch is great, but I don't know if he would like me to put this into a an AI, right? But well, I can just uh, yeah, say, or, here's or on the into builder. an AI that is shared, say, then shared with other people. information. Yeah, for me, it's okay, right? To, from yeah. this website, and then I'll paste in the website, and then it chews on it and it adds it in. Yeah, because it's the equivalent of you in your personal time looking at the website, doing a control F and trying to find the answer to your question. But now well, that's exactly, you just have it all in one place. You nailed it. Perfect. Because this is, you know, when I sit down to write code, I'm going, I have all these books and I'm flipping through them and stuff. Now I can get all of that information by asking a question. Uh, I did the same thing for Emacs because it also is kind of old and public domain-y and there's a lot, you know, I put all the reference manuals in there. Um, if you had manuals for your car, Mm -hmm. All the repair manuals for car. You could put it in. See, now it's updating. So it's it's added this. And so now I, I will have information here about how to make a command line program. And I imagine between those data points, there is some kind of uh, correlation uh, with similarities between them to inform kind of its certainty around certain... Well, here's the thing that happens, and that's interesting. And I'm, uh, so the next step was for me to figure out if I can do this locally, not pay money to chat GPT, not have to wait because chat GPT is overloaded right now. And mm -hmm. so it's a little slow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what if I could, could we create, could you and I just create these expert systems for ourselves? And it turns out we're getting there, but in every case you start with a, an LLM. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that was the same here. So you have to, I mean, and if you think about it, it makes sense. There has to be some base intelligence that tells it how to write sentences how to put information together. So there's this base, this LLM, in this case it's ChatGPT, but a lot of the uh, ones that are uh, on the on the internet you can download are Lambda, um, uh, the, the Facebook uh, LLM that leaked out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you give it this base thing and then you give it additional information on top of it. But uh, you have to be very careful as I was to say, don't it, don't project. <laughs> Just make. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, if if you that don't. That was going to be my. That was going to be my question. Is like, have you encountered in your like basic testing of this no. any instances of it? No, because I was explicit. I said, don't tell yeah. me anything that you didn't read in this in these ten books mm -hmm. and these websites. Now, what happens after you make it? So I I have some now unpublished changes because I added this website. 
Can you show the screen? So what happens now is I go to update and I can publish this. Now you can publish in public. Eventually, uh, they're going to um, have a store. Right. But and you know there's going to be some sort of Lisp agent or 10 or 20. Somebody's going to do this, yeah, although I think I've made it. the perfect one. By the way, I can do things like change the icon. It, it, can, it can change its icon. This is an icon it created, but it can change it. I can change the name. Ooh. It can do all sorts of stuff to it. Mm -hmm. And you do that in that chat interface you saw uh, as I'm doing it. So, as I, uh, um, so let's see what it's going to generate a new uh, profile picture. I don't know what it's going to be. So I got a question. It's taking um, its sweet time. If, yeah, that's why you want to do this locally. Yeah, Benito. If anybody can make one of these, how can anybody charge for any of these? Uh, maybe one person has access to a certain corpus of information that another person doesn't. Uh, I don't think I could charge, maybe, for instance, for this. Yeah, it's I don't all know public that you could domain for this material. It's not yours. For the Emacs one, I added some books that I've purchased that I have PDFs of, mm -hmm. like Mickey Peterson's amazing Mastering Emacs, uh, which means I can't put that out in public because that that's a copyrighted material. Mm -hmm. I purchased it. I can use it, and this is a great way to use it. My point being, so now I've published this with a crappy new icon, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but only for me. So it is now when I go to my uh, my login for ChatGPT, I see the experts that I created here. Um, I and they, by the way, have a few online already. If you hit explore, we played with the coloring book hero on Sunday. Mm -hmm. With you remember with Brianna mm -hmm. Wu. Um, so these are some that they've made. Like this is a good example. They game time. They've taught it all the rules of all the games. Oh my goodness! How useful is that? That how, is so useful. How, <laughs> what are the rules? I mean, how often? Do you, are you playing gin rummy and you go, does that, what's an ace high Dang, or low? Yeah, I got this card. You're like, what does this card mean in this game? So God, I this think. Would solve every disagreement with me and my parents. So this yeah. is a new kind of search, right? I mean, in the past you would search for that, yep. right? And yep. hope you find the mm -hmm. right site. But I think for things like Lisp, where there's a lot of books, there's some online material, there's a variety of places. If you have digital <laughs> versions of all of this. I think you can actually create an expert. And now I'm thinking, now that's useful. Right. And imagine, uh, you know, having, a, and by the way, I can make this, you can speak to it, by the way, it'll talk to you mm -hmm. also. Uh, imagine now I've got Scarlett Johansson in my, um, on my humane pin or in my ear or around my neck. And I can say, you know, what's my schedule for tomorrow? And do I have any free time? That would be reliable, right? Because mm -hmm. you, because that AI has access, I don't want to use human pronouns. It has access to the corpus that's real. Right, right. And it's not making any assumptions. It's only accessing, you've given it the, the command to only access Ironically, this is what we talked about in the, in the 70s with AI was expert systems. And people were manually <laughs> putting in every rule... One of my list books, you teach it how to be a car mechanic, mm. <laughs> and you, but you have to put in every rule. Now you could just read in all the manuals. I think this is, to wow. me, this is really useful. Yeah. D&D. Yeah. &D. Absolutely. You could use, you could have it be your D&D &D game, Paris. Like, yeah. I mean, it could have all the rules in there. They have a lot of procedurally generated kind of dungeons right. and uh, automatic systems like right. this, but... It would be great if you could combine every source book into one and have it be kind of like a side DM. If, you know, someone has a particular rules question, you could just ask ChatGPT. And it could be a dungeon master. Yeah, I was just going to say an AI yeah. dungeon master. I have to imagine that that already exists. That has to exist. It's got to exist. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> exists. So I think that this humane AI pin makes more sense to me based on the idea that it's recording audio and video from my life and that yeah. becomes its corpus. Yeah. Then, because I would say, what's two plus two? Right. That's of less interest. It, if I could do a Google search with it, that's of less interest. Yeah. Yesterday at, at at five, I was talking with Bob, and he he mentioned something that I really wanted to go back to. It was this video about someone? Can you tell me what that video was? Right. And yeah, but I'm but, you know obviously I think the the obvious thing there is the the privacy implications of constantly recording and processing information. That's okay for me. It's useful for me. But how does Bob feel that uh, I'm standing there talking to him, recording everything, well, and have I mean, infinite kind our, of searchability about it later? You know. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, how do how does our understanding of like social dynamics change if suddenly 
memory is no longer fallible if there is an answer to everything. If suddenly everything is searchable, of. like yeah. literally yeah. everything in life is searchable. <laughs> not yeah. just what like, I feel like if every content. conversation yes. I had with my mom is searchable. Oh That's my crazy. goodness. Think about the impact. Of so that. you two are, I'm sure too young to remember going to the library. If you had to find some information, you had to go to the library and get it. I remember For that. sure. Uh, I remember the library. <laughs> well, no, I'm I not. No, I know the libraries. Library are, recently. <laughs> they're still around, but I mean, if if you wanted to know what were what's a list of the movies John Wayne was in, you couldn't just mm -hmm. go to your computer and type in a question. You're right. So Google has already kind of, to some degree, gotten us to the first stage, which is, and that was their, by the way, that was their mission statement: putting all the world's knowledge or making it all available. Right. Uh, now. I think we're at the same inflection point we were when, when search engines arrived and the internet arrived. I think we're at that same place. Now it's, now what if you could search your life? Oh my goodness, yeah. What if you could search your bookshelf? Um, and if you can tell it the corpus that you, it, uh, that you want it to be expert in, I think there's some really something, it, it's, it's, it's effectively the same as a Google search for the next it's the next step of a google right. search does that make sense yeah absolutely it makes yeah. sense it's a google search for your life all right well that was my God. epiphany that's yeah <laughs> so so paris Just imagining uh, being able to search every person i've ever met what a world wouldn't you love that and i think your kids <laughs> will be able to do that because you know we've started too late yeah but but your kids uh you know when they're 13 you give them a pin and uh, say, we'll implant the pin. Be, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to be in their heads by that time. <laughs> right. Elon Musk is going to make sure of that. Yeah, yeah. What uh, what GPT would you make, Paris? If if Leo's making a lisp, uh, a lisp GPT, is uh, there a GPT that comes I to mind for you? If I didn't have the privacy concerns that are inherent in this, yeah. the first thing that comes to mind is. A big part of my job is talking to people on the phone, taking copious notes, uh, taking notes on different things I research. I just have a truly an incredible corpus of notes related to my work. A lot of it is like sensitive or documents. I would put all of that in there so that when I'm researching a story, instead of me searching through all my different notes of different phone calls or transcripts or documents, I would just ask. Mm -hmm. And that would be fantastic. This is why oh, you don't gosh. want to use a server-based AI. Because yeah. you can never know that. I mean, Google has, we've talked about Notebook LM. They have tools like that. But what you really want is something on your system that you could put all your transcripts into. You could be doing that today. And then you could query it at any time. I, I think that that's now possible mm -hmm. and will get yeah. more and more possible. In fact, I'm congratulating myself because I bought completely, there's no, was no sense in it buying this m3 max but i wanted a computer that had a lot of ram had a lot of storage and had a, a machine language coprocessor mm -hmm. and apple's done that apple's been doing that for longer than anybody they started with the iphone uh now microsoft uh, is is you know pushing nvidia i'm uh, not nvidia uh, intel to do that uh, qualcomm says they're going to do that starting in the middle of the next year all computers will start coming with uh, what Microsoft calls NPUs, neural processing units. Microsoft calls, um, I don't know, machine language uh, processing units. Now, suddenly, your computer, I wanted a computer that was power. I don't, I'm not going to do the kind of high-end stuff that some professionals are doing with video editing and photography, but maybe with AI, we all need <laughs> high-end systems because suddenly, if you can do it locally, that's transformative. So I I'm going to play with that. I'll, I'll report back to you. Well, and the more that people do do that, the more those that don't are kind of left behind. Well, and right? chat GPT, open AI and others would argue, oh, please do it. That's now suddenly you understand why they're doing GPTs basically for free. I pay 20 bucks a month for yep. chat GPT and I've designed these two experts. They get the benefit of that. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a little checkbox yeah. at the bottom. <laughs> they hide it away. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go into the edit. If you Are go all of your books being siphoned up? Well, yeah, is that's that that's one is? question. Uh, I had too, is... There's a little checkbox under additional settings. Wait a minute. You can see it. Use conversation data in your GPT to improve our models. Ooh. And that's default checked. And you might not see it under additional settings. For sure. Clearly. I love that it's the only thing under additional <laughs> settings, too. Yeah. It's just like an additional click. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, they understand that they're going to get a huge benefit from people designing these expert systems, and then they can in incorporate them into. And you know what? They're saying copyright be damned. I don't know why I'm paying so much attention to copyright. 
they're saying, well, yeah, give it, <laughs> give us everything. We'll, we'll worry about that later. Mm -hmm. um, Jason, what GPT would you make? Uh, yours, yours. I is, love yours, Paris. Yeah, yours sounds so important by comparison. But the thing that, <laughs> the thing that, comes yeah, no, to, this is just the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, right, but, right. Yeah. The thing but that that's comes your to work. mind for me sense. is I'm always so I'm a, I'm a musician. And I enjoy writing music and working with music technology and stuff. And I'm always kind of open and exploring like new kind of ways to you know produce this effect or how do I you know treat vocals differently or whatever I do. And I'm always turning to places like Reddit or YouTube to just kind of see what other people are doing. And I wonder if it's possible to have a system like this that takes in those sources. Of course, Reddit would hate this. And that's why they kind of cut off the siphon of their data, right? Not too long ago. That but was very able, timely. I think you're exactly right. Absolutely. Yeah. To take in that information so that I could then have a GPT and just be like, I've got this drum track. It's giving me problems. It's doing this. What are like five ways I could solve it? Or five different creative like things that I could try to see what I come up with. I think as that as a, a musician, I would worry uh, if I'm writing music that I'm inadvertently stealing somebody's music. You know, George Harrison for sure s stole he's so f fine and made it my sweet lord. And uh, I'm sure that's hard because as a musician, you listen to a lot of music. Yeah, wouldn't it be cool if you could say, "Well, here I got this lick." Da da da. Has anybody written anything like that? <laughs> I feel like that would be dangerous millions. because the answer is always yes. 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 <laughs> That's true. There is no original like melody that exists. I anymore. bet you though somebody write a copyright uh, expert that could say, "Am I in copyright trouble here?" If I yeah. uh, maybe you don't want that. Well, I've been playing around with Music LM a little bit, um, which is have Google, you Google's kind of oh neat um, AI around like creating music snippets. I don't and think stuff. it sounds very good well, when I listen to. No, it. I agree. There's a lot of it that doesn't sound very good. But what I've realized in using it is, if I think about it as like a sample source versus like a uh. music track to drop in. If I think about it as if it's a record that I pulled off the shelf and I'm sampling a specific moment in that record and then I plan to chop it up and put it through processing and do weird stuff with it, you can actually come up with something that's incredibly useful. Yeah. Um, but I do wonder about that. Like what, okay, so what is the music that's behind these systems? How, like, and, and should I, should I feel wrong about this? Like sampling it? Meanwhile, Google says like, you know, use this. I, I don't know that you can profit off of it. It's a part of their AI test kitchen right now. I'm not sure that I could, you know, uh, make money off of this, but it's still, it's, it's fun to play around with. And I do wonder about the copyright aspect. Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. ACI Learning's 80% completion rate is 50% higher than the training industry average. Invest in your team with the best training they're sure to love. Twit listeners can receive up to 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan. Based on your team's size, you'll receive a properly quoted discount tailored to your needs.